Welcome back to The Gnome Show, everyone. I am Joshua, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror and sci-fi, and anything else that I think is groovy. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy tonight's offering. Content for the blood god. <clears throat> I mean, on with the show. Tonight we have The Train Man Was the First Architect uh, by Matrix Explained. Um, go um, go see their stuff, show them some love. Um, without further ado, um, let's rumble. In Matrix, Re In Matrix Revolutions, we were introduced to the Train Man. And yeah, I thought I thought the Train Man was pretty interesting too, and he's fucking crazy. And that dude is from Mad Max, um, one, two, and the third one. I think he was in. I think he's all been all in, actually. One of the exiles that work for the Merovingian. This program was capable of knocking Neo out with a single punch. But how can this minion be that powerful? How was it possible for him to easily <coughs> beat Neo? Also. Could it be that the Train Man and the Merovingian were the predecessor programs of the Architect and the Oracle? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome Keep looking over at my to the desert of the real. After Neo used his powers in the real world, he fell into a coma and his consciousness ended up in a world between worlds. Mobile Ave, a separate simulation outside the Matrix, created by the Train Man, a mysterious program that has existed for a long time. We don't know exactly which version of the Matrix the Train Man came from, but we do know that he was at least around during the fifth simulation. In Enter the Matrix, he mentions to Niobe that last time, Zion lasted only 72 hours referring to the attack of the machines on the city. 72 hours. 72 hours. <laughs> what did you just say? That's exactly how long Zion lasted last time. What do you mean and who are you? Me? Nobody. Just a spectator enjoying the ride. <laughs> 72 hours. Recall that the current Zion is the sixth, so the train man witnessed the previous city's destruction. If the train man was able to see the destruction of the fifth Zion personally, this means that he was in the real world. Why do we believe this? Well, Mobile Ave is located in a place between the Matrix and the real world, possibly connected to Machine City. The train man can enter and leave the Matrix whenever he wants. That could be how he saw the destruction of Zion. There is also the possibility that the train man is not an exiled program of the Matrix, but of Machine City. This is why he can create simulations, an ability that should be exclusive to the architect. The train man created Mobile F as a gateway to the Matrix, and it is an interesting creation indeed. First of all, Neo's consciousness was trapped in this place after he used his powers in the real world. His mind detached itself from his body. We've right, theorized right. that the power of the One, or the anomaly's code inside Neo, connected to the Sentinel's wireless signal. Then Neo's body collapsed before his consciousness could right. return to it, thus ending up in an unknown place between the Matrix and the real world. Neo had no powers in Mobile Ave. The train man, as he well put it, was God there. No other programs, that includes the Agents and the Anomaly, can beat the Train Man in a fight in Mobile Ave. But why? The Agents of the Matrix follow the rules of the simulation, and the One can bend those rules. I've seen an Agent punch through a concrete wall. Men have emptied entire clips at them and hit nothing but air. Yet their strength and their speed are still based in a world that is built on rules because of that. They will never be as strong or as fast as you can be. So the fact that Neo has no powers in Mobile Ave demonstrates that maybe Morpheus was wrong. The Anomaly's code inside Neo grants him incredible abilities within the Matrix. 
But if there was a program created by another entity that does not use the equation or language of the matrix, then the anomaly's code will not work. Like trying to run a Windows program on a Mac. This is a major weakness of the one and all other programs of the matrix. Yeah. Because an entity like the train man can create a construct that can trap them all, including the architect, and they would not have the power to escape. This is an extremely powerful and dangerous weapon that the Merovingian has at his command. The train man is seen as a program smuggler or mule, but objectively, he is the creator of simulations as sophisticated as the Matrix. The Merovingian. Maybe he's the loading program. Maybe that's what, what the train man is. Like, he interfaces between the machine city and the Matrix as, like, uh, the one who loads the simulations. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, basically a front loader, like, uh, someone that delivers, like, uh, packages into the Matrix or makes new simulations or adds to the simulation, uh, whatever. But that's pretty cool. She can also modify the Matrix code using something as plentiful as food making these two entities combined a very dangerous pair. And here lies a crazy, yet sound, theory. We know that the current architect has failed several times in his attempt to find the perfect balance of the equation. Yet nothing prevents us from theorizing that there may have existed a previous program similar to the architect who also failed at its purpose and was replaced by the old man dressed in white. To help you understand this, Let's recap on how a Matrix program becomes an exile. Usually a program chooses exile when it faces deletion. And why would a program be deleted? Maybe it breaks down. Maybe a better program is created to replace it. Happens all the time. Mm -hmm. And when it does, a program can either choose to hide here or return to the source. It's pretty straightforward. If an outdated program does not return to the source, it becomes an exile, an enemy of the system. However, these exiles retain their programmed abilities. For example, Seraph was an agent of the Paradise Matrix. His purpose was to protect humans. He continues his purpose as a guardian, only now he protects the Oracle. Other members of the Merovingian's posse were also agents of previous simulations, but now they are his swords and shields. Even the Keymaker continues his purpose as the gateway opener for the One, even though he is also considered an exile. Basically knowing an exile's abilities is discovering what was their original purpose. The Train Man can enter and exit the Matrix, create simulations, and most importantly, be a spectator of the real world. Knowing the Train Man's abilities and the fact that he is an exile makes us wonder what program replaced him what other program shares these attributes? What program can create simulations and be able to spectate the destruction of Zion, as well as enter and exit the Matrix at will? The Architect If this hypothesis is correct, the train man could have been the architect of the older or beta version of the Matrix. Now you might be thinking that this is not the case, because the Resistance created the construct meaning that you don't have to be an architect to create simulations. You would be right if the train man were human, but he is not. He is a program, and whatever his initial purpose was before becoming an exile, it most likely involved creating simulations and perhaps transporting people to said simulations. Right. Now we've also theorized the possibility that the Merovingian is the predecessor of the Oracle, he was an operating system of the Matrix, which ran the principle of causality, to which this principle would eventually be replaced by the notion of choice, and he would subsequently be replaced by the Oracle. This would explain why the Merovingian hates the Oracle, and why he is so powerful. He once was responsible for helping to balance the equation with cause and effect. If these theories are correct, the train man could have been the creator of the Beta Matrix, and the Merovingian was to control the humans with causality, but both programs failed their purpose and were replaced by the Architect and the Oracle, thus becoming the first exiles. The Train Man and the Merovingian now work together to gain allies, bypassing each simulation in search of more power to take back what was once theirs. Perhaps the real war is the one between these four programs, an extremely personal one, 
that falls within the framework of possibilities for Matrix 4 or future Matrix content. It would be interesting if it turns out that the Merovingian and the Train Man are the programs responsible for creating the original Matrix. And until Matrix 4 is released, anything is possible. But do you agree? Was the Train Man and the Merovingian or maybe they were responsible for creating uh, the anomaly, like and and successfully like injecting it into the system, uh, essentially like um, um. Well, no, they said that like the anomaly. Never mind. Never mind. Um, that's a, there's a lot of food for thought, but uh, yeah, I kind of agree. Like uh, they could be the original, uh, the forerunners, and that would be a nice. Uh, um, uh, matrix uh continuation you know like take it back to what the actual movies are about yeah all right ladies and gentlemen um that was uh the train man was the first architect uh sound off in the comments what you thought you agree with uh the with his analysis um like subscribe and share uh i love you all be safe happy and healthy i'll see you in the next one